So yesterday I posted on Instagram asking friends why they haven't invested in the stock market yet and a few of the answers I received were along the lines of I don't know where to begin and I have zero knowledge or anything involved. So I promised them that I'm going to make this video to show everyone how to get started in three simple steps. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So to get started, we're going to go to investopedia.com and we're going to go ahead and click on simulator and you have to sign up and make an account. Once you've done that, you'll see a page like this. So most people are familiar with the idea of buying something low and selling it high. And that's the structure that our economies work on. You find a material, you know, you process it, and then you turn it into something else, and then you sell it for a higher price. But in this case, we're buying a stock, which is a representation of a fraction of a company. So you're essentially buying a part of a company. On the left hand side, we can go to the trade area. So we're going to go ahead and click on that and it'll prompt us with this little form. So it asks us for the stock symbol, which we're going to put in as Apple. And then it'll show us over here on the right hand side, the last price it was traded at. So the last price the market thinks Apple is worth is $127.79. We're going to go ahead and put in one unit of Apple. I'm going to keep it nice and simple. One unit, $127.79, right? Okay, sure. So if we go ahead and hit preview order, it brings us to another page and it shows us some information about our purchase. One of the things we have to take into account is the commission price. This is the fee the broker charges us in order to place this trade. So our trade is not $127.79. It's actually $157.74. And that means if you want to sell the stock for a profit, well, you need this stock to move more than this value, including the commission to sell, which is another $29 in order to clear a profit. So that's quite a bit of headroom that you need in order to make some change in your portfolio. So we're going to go back and we're actually going to change this to 10 shares. And instead of buying this at market, we're going to use a limit order and the limit order allows us to tell the broker what price we want to pay for the stock, the most that we're willing to pay. So let's just pick a nice round number. I think that Apple is going to lose $7.79 in value. So we're going to put $120 as our limit order. We want to buy 10 shares. So it should cost us $1,200 plus the $29.95. So we hit preview order and now it shows an estimated total of $12.29.95. If the price of the stock goes up a few dollars past $120, then I will make a profit. So we're going to go ahead with that and then hit submit order. Now the market's currently closed, so nothing's going to happen. There's no activity at the moment. But once the market opens and let's say Apple does go to $120, then our trade will execute and we'll be able to buy that stock for that price. So I'm often asked what a dividend is. If you're joining for the first time and you're not familiar with what a dividend is, it's essentially uh, interest that the company gives you for being a shareholder. So that's akin to your bank paying you interest on your cash or your savings account just for having money inside of that bank's account. So typically a bank will provide less than one and a half percent in a savings account and we're talking about a pretty hefty savings account but most don't even pay that which is a problem because inflation is about two percent so that means that your money in your account is actually losing money every single year because it's not keeping up with inflation. So Apple is a mix between a growth stock and a dividend stock. So a growth stock by definition is one that will sacrifice its dividend in order to grow. Whereas a dividend stock is the opposite of a growth stock. It focuses primarily on paying its shareholders every month or quarter of the year for investing in their company. So typically most people buy a stock at a low price and sell at a higher price to make a profit. But there's also another strategy called short selling. And I'm just going to cover this slightly, but I don't advise you do it unless you're a seasoned investor and you've practiced on the simulator several times in order to understand this concept because the losses can be infinite and that is not what I want anyone to do. So do your due diligence before trying short selling. I'm going to explain the concept of short selling. So let's say that uh, you, you want to borrow my iPhone and let's say it's for three months and I charge you about $25 a month to borrow this iPhone. 
what you do is you take the iPhone for $25 a month, uh, you're going to sell it right away for $1,000, and then you're going to buy it back for $500, and that difference is your profit. So it sounds pretty good, right, in theory, but that only works if the price goes down. If the price goes up, then you're out the $75, and you're also out the difference that you owe me. Now, the losses can be infinite because if the price of the phone keeps going up, let's say there was a shortage of iPhones and now every iPhone is worth $5,000 because that's what people are willing to pay, then you're forced to pay that because otherwise I'm gonna keep asking you for the premium every month and maybe I'll even force you to give it back to me and I'll charge you an exorbitant fee if you don't. That's the concept of short selling. Uh, I don't advise anyone does it because you can lose an infinite amount of money. So for beginners, we're just gonna stick to buying low and then selling high. Now, one way you can find companies to look at is by going to finviz.com. So finviz.com allows you to see insider trading activity. If you go to the bottom of the page and you click anywhere here, we can see what people have bought. So it lists the ticker, so the company, the person who bought it, their relationship to the company, the date they purchased it, the transaction type, the price they paid, the number of shares, and the total value of their transaction. We're gonna go ahead and hit this one over here, OPK. So let's look at this. OPK was purchased by Frost Phillip. He's the CEO and chairman. He purchased this uh, on February 19th for 477 a share. 500,000 shares at a total cost of $2,383,455. If we click on his name, then we can see all of his purchase transactions. And then if we change the filter to all transactions, we can see what he's also sold, uh, which just appears to be this one at the moment. Seems like he's got a lot of OPK. So we click on OPK. We'll be able to see the chart here. Uh, how much of the stock is currently valued at, which is 470, and we'll be able to see the historical data uh, going pretty far back as far as uh, June here. Further, if you scroll down, you'll be able to see what different rating agencies have rated this stock if they think that it is uh, outperforming what their price target was, it's underperforming, if it's a good buy, if you, they think you should sell it, and so forth. You can tell what kind of company it is, but what I recommend is just finding out who is purchasing the stock and then doing your own research on where the stock is headed and what their thesis is ultimately going forward into the future. Do they have a good management team? Are they in debt? What are their revenues like? Another thing we can look at is called the P-E ratio. It's the price to earnings ratio. So you think of this as the price that the stock is currently at uh, and the earnings is always $1, okay? So you're gonna look at this and say, for every $97.92 that you pay, you will receive $1. So imagine paying $97.92 to receive $1, it's quite high. A good PE ratio is typically around the 10 to 20 range. So Apple's PE ratio is 34.55, and that's not too bad. There's definitely better, and there's certainly worse. So next, I wanna talk about some books that I recommend, and that's The Intelligent Investor, which covers value investing, and Understanding Wall Street, which goes over how Wall Street works, the history of Wall Street. It even goes into other topics like what are bubbles, what is a stock, and so much more. I highly recommend recommend it. Uh, you can find it between $10 and $20 or you can rent it from your library. And uh, it definitely will provide you with a solid foundation on what to look for in stocks. So if you're coming into this uh, with absolutely no knowledge, read these two books and you'll have a better grip on the stock market and how it functions. Well, that's the end of this video. I hope it was helpful. If you found this insightful, give me a thumbs up and comment below with anything that you would like to learn and I'll do my best to explain it in future videos. Thanks for tuning in.